I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. There is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. These were the quoted from Thomas Watson and Ken Olson on interactive systems. This module is about the design and evaluation of a class of systems that were not even envisaged until relatively recently. Until the 1980s, almost all commercial computer systems were non-interactive. Computer operators would set up the machines to read in large volumes of data, say customers' bank details and transactions, and the computer would then process each input and generate appropriate output. There are still lots of these systems in place, but the world is also now full of interactive computer systems. These are systems that involve users in a direct way. In interactive systems, the user and computer exchange information frequently and dynamically. Norman's evaluation slash execution model is a useful way of understanding the nature of interaction. User has a goal something to achieve. 2. User looks at system and attempts to work out how he would execute a series of tasks to achieve a goal. 3. User carries out some actions, providing input to the system by pressing buttons, touching a screen, speaking words, etc. 4. System responds to the actions and presents results to the user. System can use text, graphics, sounds, speech, etc. 5. User looks at the results of his action and attempts to evaluate whether or not the goals have been achieved. A good interactive system is one where user can easily work out how to operate the system in an attempt to achieve his goals. User can easily evaluate the results of his action on the system. This course is about methods, tools, and techniques that can be used to ensure that the user and computer can interact effectively. We will be looking, then, at the human-computer interaction or HCI elements of systems design. What interactive systems do you use in your day-to-day -day life? Your first response might be to identify the personal computer and all its applications. However, the term interactive system can be applied to a much broader range of devices, for example, mobile telephones, cash dispensing machines, the World Wide Web, car navigation systems, video recorder, Machines-driven call centers example for telephone banking. Workflow system to coordinate a team's work efforts. The Invisible Computer, a book where Don Norman argues the case for information appliances. He suggests that the PC is too cumbersome and unwieldy a tool. It has too many applications and features to be useful. He sees the future as being one where we use specific appliances for specific jobs. Norman envisions the world full of information appliances, the world populated by interactive computer systems. The home medical advisor sensors in the home will enable blood pressure, temperature, weight, body fluids, and so on to be automatically monitored. A computer could use these readings to assist with medical advice or to contact a human doctor. Digital picture frames give this frame to a friend or relative. When you have taken a new picture you want them to share, simply email the picture direct to the frame. The frame will be connected to the net wirelessly. The weather and traffic display. At the moment when we want the time, we simply look at a clock. Soon, perhaps, when we want to know the weather or traffic conditions, we will look at a similar device. Embedded systems within our clothes consider the value of eyeglass appliances. Many of us already wear eyeglasses, why not supplant them with more power? Add a small electronic display to the glasses, and we could have all sorts of valuable information with us at all times. The new banking system described is clearly a success from a system point of view. The designers have thought about the technical demands of the system to achieve, for example, high throughput of database queries. How, though, do users feel about the system? 
the bank's customers have responded badly to the new system. They want to know why the system does not let them allow them to hear details of their most recent transactions, pay bills, and do other common functions. From a human perspective, the system is a real failure. It fails because it is not as useful as it might be and has very serious HCI problems. It fails because the designers have not fully considered what would be useful and usable from the customer's point of view. For an interactive system to be useful, it should be goal-centered. When a person uses a computer, they will have one or more goals in mind. A useful interactive system is one that empowers users to achieve their goals. When you build an interactive system, you should make sure you use a range of design and evaluation methods to discover the goals and associated system functionality that will make your system useful. Usability is about building a system that takes account of the user's capabilities and limitations. A system that has good usability is likely to have the following qualities, learnable. Novice users can discover how to use key functions of the system quickly and progress to a level of expertise with ease. Flexible. Users should be able to interact with the system in ways that best suit their needs. The system should be flexible enough to permit a range of preferences. Robust. A system is robust if a user is given the means to achieve their goals, to assess their progress, and to recover from any errors made. Why is HCI important? Interfaces are something we do at the end of software development. We want to make the system look nice for the end user. However, experience has shown that badly designed interfaces can lead to serious implications. If you build poor interfaces, you might find your company loses money as its workforce is less productive than it could be. The quality of life of the users who use your system is reduced. Disastrous and possibly fatal errors happen in systems that are safety critical. There has been a lot of interest in the past into a phenomenon known as the productivity paradox. People have wondered why when so much money has been spent in recent years on computer systems has there been such a limited improvement in organization and country productivity. The common belief is that computers can make a business more efficient and effective, but there has been little economic data to back this up. Sometimes poor HCI design can lead to very serious implications. There are many systems that are safety critical. A safety critical system must work under all conditions without failure or error. Some examples are airplane control systems, nuclear power control systems, computer controlled medical equipment. Bad interfaces can lead to disasters and even fatalities. This course is about the design and evaluation of interactive computer systems in order to improve usefulness and usability. What does design and evaluation mean, and why are these activities important? Unfortunately, sometimes when an interactive system is built, designers fail to consider an essential aspect of the system, the human users. For successful interactions, there has to be explicit and well thought out consideration of this human factor, usability, needs to be designed into the device, or, system. To achieve this, as we will see later in the course, there are a range of models, techniques, and tools, that can be used, to construct the system. All of these methods, attempt to center the design on their user group, this is why the methods are collectively known as, user Centra design, or, UCD. Note that interactive system designers must understand their users. A good designer will not simply trust that his skill and experience will always produce designs that are highly effective. Evaluation is about testing to see if the interactive system has good usability and usefulness. There are two types. Formative evaluation, it is not good enough just to test your system once it is completely built. Evaluations 
should be carried out all the way through the design and development cycle. The results of these evaluations should be used to guide the design. Summative evaluation. Once a system has been built, then an overall assessment of its usability is needed. These tests should be done to validate aspects of the design and to test the acceptance of the system by the end users. The study of human-computer interaction has developed into a discipline in its own right over the last 10 years or so. Long before HCI people were studying how humans and systems, machines, processes, and so on work together. In the Second World War, for example, weapons developers were interested in making their products more effective. There has been a lot of work into the ergonomics of the machines, environments, and systems that humans are involved in. Ergonomics is mainly concerned with making sure that the physical aspects of a system fit well with a human's capabilities and limitation. Car design are the car's controls. Product design is the stool easy to handle. Workplace is the lighting good, is the desk and seat adjustable to suit their users. As more and more computer systems were introduced, people began to get involved in thinking about the way in which humans relate and interact with these new environments. There are two types of people involved in HCI work, namely researchers and practitioners. Researchers. Many universities and technology companies, for example, Xerox, Apple, and Microsoft, have research labs that are dedicated to improving interaction by, amongst other things, finding out key aspects that affect the quality of interaction, developing new technologies, for example, handwriting recognition for interaction. Developing models and tools which system builders can use to build better interfaces. Evaluating the impact of alternative interaction approaches on usability. Practitioners. Organizations that build interactive systems need HCI professionals to help them do a better job. Some examples of HCI in practice are a HCI lab and a consumer electronic manufacturer. Usability consultants, software engineers with HCI training. HCI draws on a wide range of disciplines as we will see during this course. They include psychology, sociology, information systems, product design, computer science. This unit has been an introduction to the course. In the next unit 9, you will learn and think about much more motivations for studying this course. We will look in more detail at why HCI is important and what might happen if you get it wrong. The capabilities and limitations of human information processing. You need to know about how humans process information from their senses. How does visual processing work? What other senses are used? How does human memory operate? These and other questions will be addressed and you will explore how this knowledge can be used to build better interfaces. Interaction Technologies You will learn about the range of devices and methods available for humans and computers to communicate. Tools and Techniques for a User-Centered Design This is an important part of the course. You will learn about and practice using a range of tools that can be used to make sure that the user's concerns are at the heart of the design process.